there are some other crimes going around our culture, and a lot of people are defending those crimes. Uh, there, there's a documentary out from Vice, the left-wing magazine media company, in which libs make an argument explicitly that they've been making implicitly for many, many years. Namely, that if you, if you criticize crime, you're actually criticizing a race and a culture. Statistically, it is true that Asians, right, on average, make more money it, like in terms of medium, make more money, better test scores, get into better colleges, all that stuff. I think the question is, why is that? And I don't know if model minority, whatever that label wants That's to be. That's actually mean. a not, myth well, because not, we cannot be... Um, well, no, listen, well, let me finish my point. We need to observe what makes people successful and unsuccessful. And I think when you look at trends that are generally true in the Asian community, not of everyone, but are generally true, usually you have families that are sticking together. You have, um, you know, people are taught to work hard in school, not get into trouble. I think that translates to why Asians on mass are successful. And I don't think you have to be Asian or white for that matter to not have kids out of wedlock, not, you know, commit crime, not, not cause trouble, what whatever happening? it is. It's just a matter of like, well, common sense, that's what makes people successful. And if that's so-called assimilation, having a nuclear family, buying a house, going to school, whatever it is, then yeah, okay, call me a pro-assimilation then. I think there's a difference between assimilation and erasure. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, there it is right there at the end. Throughout the whole clip, if you were only listening to it, you weren't able to watch the just beautiful expressions on the faces of all the libs on the panel. He says, you know, I just think probably people shouldn't have kids out of wedlock and uh, you know, they should get married and they should do well in school and they should not commit crimes. And you look on the people's faces, they say, oh, is, he really, is he really telling people not to commit crimes? Oh, is he, oh my God. Gosh, what is he? And then at the end, at the very, very tail end of that clip, you get the thrust of the Libs argument. They say, well, look, come on. Uh, what you're talking about, that's not assimilation. That's erasure. Erasure is the, the Lib term that, that describes when you disrespect and erase a different cultural groups and racial groups is usually how it's applied. Which is to say the Libs are, are suggesting that crime... <laughs> It's just an integral part of certain races and cultures, which so that sounds like the kind of argument that if we said it, they would call that racist. But they're the, they're the ones who are saying that. And it is not true. It is not true. Our society says that, though. Our society says that good culture is a crime and that criminal culture is good. Our society says that people going to mass with their families to worship God on Sunday, that that is tantamount to a crime. It's violent extremism. It's terrorism. Let's go sick the feds on those Catholics. But people who are committing actual crimes, robberies, looting, murder, that, that's just their culture. And we can't tell anyone that their culture is bad and we need to let them off the hook. And BLM goes and burns the country down for eight months. Well, let's, let's drop the charges. Come on. Society made them do that. Come on. Actually, we, we supported it ourselves. We elites running society. That's where we are, completely upside down. Ron DeSantis announced the conclusion of a plan that he had uh, declared a year ago. Ron DeSantis is taking self-government away from Disney. Disney's going to pay its debt. And I think if you remember when we did the initial special session where we set the sunset date, and we knew we'd have to deal with this. I always said that they're going to come in and we're going to, we're going to figure out the best way to do it. Uh, so, so what I said really for the last six, nine months is Disney is no longer going to have self-government. They're not going to have their own government. Disney is going to pay its fair share of taxes, and Disney's going to honor the debt, and that's exactly what this proposed piece of legislation will do. Uh, if you remember, when we first went down this road last spring, a lot of folks in the media were saying that, oh my gosh, Disney's actually going to pay less taxes, and Floridians are going to pay more taxes. They were saying that, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Well, this puts that to bed, and so those debts will be honored, and those will be paid now. This is obviously now going to be controlled by the state of Florida, which is no longer self-governing for them. So there's a new sheriff in town, and that's just the way it's going to be. Really, really good look. In practice, what this means is that Disney, for the last half century or more, has had 
control of the local government of the district that Disney World operates in. And what DeSantis has done is take over the district, take it back from Disney. So Florida Republicans will have DeSantis appointing all five leaders of Disney's tax district in Orlando, and they will rename the district. So it will no longer be called the Reedy Creek Improvement District, which is what it had been called. It'll now be the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. And the reason this matters for DeSantis in particular is it shows follow through. It's not just an announcement. When he announced it last year, I thought, oh, this is a good political stunt. This looks good. It's the right idea. Okay, fine. But then he actually followed through with it. He doesn't really get a new headline out of the announcement yesterday. I mean, we're talking about it. Some people will talk about it. But it's not a new news story. He already announced that this would happen. The difference is now he's following through, which is important if he is going to run for president in 2024. It looks like he is. He'll be able to point and say, look, I don't just have the right gut instincts. I don't just come out with big announcements that grab headlines, but I actually follow through with them. You can trust me to do what I am promising you that I will do. The other reason that this looks really good for Ron DeSantis is it shows that Ron DeSantis's conservatism is a conservatism that is much more comfortable wielding state power than the conservatism of many of the squishes in the party. Many people in the Republican Party, especially over the last 20 years, their their conservatism has amounted to, hey, I'm not going to do anything. You elect me and I'm just basically going to go home and I'm not going to, the most I'm going to do is deregulate and give corporations more power and let them do whatever they want. That that was the heavily libertarian-scented conservative base movement kind of conservatism in recent years. And the, the reason that that was attractive to people is because big government has done all sorts of bad things, and so we were reacting against that. The other reason is because we had, we've just fought a Cold War for the second half of the 20th century, and so opposition to big government was something that united a lot of conservatives because our enemy was the Soviet Union and, and communism. We are now seeing some of the excesses in the other direction. When you privatize everything, when you give woke corporations free reign to do whatever the hell that they want, that also can hurt conservatives. If it's big government taking my rights, that's bad. If it's Google taking my rights, that's also bad. It's not, if it's Disney transing my kids, that is just as bad as if Dr. Fauci were transing my kids or Rochelle Walensky or who's that guy, the guy who is the assistant health secretary, Richard Levine, that guy. It's just as bad. I, I don't care whether it's a public or allegedly private entity transing my kids. All I care about is, are my kids being transed? Are my rights being taken away? Is my way of life being upended? And a lot of conservatives, just they're not there yet. They don't quite understand how to articulate why it is a good thing sometimes to wield state power against woke corporations. Ron DeSantis can do it. He can articulate it and he is actually doing it. And the other Republicans who want to look good coming into 2024 are going to have to get on the stick at the rest of the show continues now. You don't want to miss it. Become a member at dailywire.com slash Knowles. Use code Knowles at checkout for two months free on all annual plans.